What's up, everybody? How's it going? And welcome to this episode of the Car Rent Podcast. Today, I am borrowing the green screen at my church because where I'm at, we're doing a lot of laundry, and that means that it's, well, kind of loud. <laughs> so I figured to get a nice, quieter environment that we could do this podcast in, I would come here and I get to borrow this cool thing. So shout out to you guys. If you are new to this channel and you're new to what we do here, we have the Car Rent Podcast, which you're watching right now. We have our regular series, and then we do reviews and stuff like that in that regular series. This is more of, let me pique your interest, let's talk about some things kind of thing. So if you like what you're seeing, check out our other videos, give us a subscribe if you would, and we'll see you on other episodes. Now with all of that said and out of the way, let's get down to business. What is today's podcast about? Today's podcast is about buying things online and how to properly do that. Now, when you're going online and you're looking for parts for your car, oftentimes, we look to many places. Car ID, uh, we look to MA Performance, we look to Rally Sport Direct if you have a turbo car. The list goes on. But sometimes, man, maybe you'll even look online at like Facebook and their new little marketplace thing that they've got going on, or you look at Craigslist, but sometimes you look at eBay. And today I wanted to talk about all of that type of stuff because I've begun noticing a trend of people trying to be cheap. And the problem is kind of going about it the wrong way. When it comes to buying parts online, you have a number of options. It's true. You do have a number of places that you can shop at like I was saying, but not all of them offer things at a good, cheaper, more affordable rate. And... Oftentimes it means that we go to places like eBay to try and get those parts. And I wanted to put it out there and say that you should not buy parts for your car that are critical to the car's performance, to the car's safety, and to the car's actual drivability from eBay. And the reason why you should not do that is because oftentimes, this, let's just put it out there, oftentimes those parts come from places where they're not quality testing their parts or they're coming from places that are making repu like re-copies if you will uh, rips, reps, whatever you want to call them uh, sometimes they're also making parts that legitimately do nothing you know Mighty Car Mod is a great example they bought their S2000 and then they tried to see if they could get an eBay chip to work on their car and when they cracked it open it turns out that it was an LED circuit it literally did nothing and that was 20 30 bucks that they lost you know somebody scammed them hard not that hard but you know what i'm saying somebody got their money and they got a box of nothing so when it comes to the performance and the safety of your car please for the love of god don't shop at ebay because that's the price tag you're putting on your safety that's the price tag you're putting on your car's longevity it's just it ain't worth it it ain't worth it at all always save the money guys always save the money to buy from either direct from manufacturer or from reputable sites like the ones i mentioned ma performance and rally sport and car id because they are getting it from the manufacturers themselves sometimes even oem parts from like for me i bought mitsubishi wheel hubs so i could actually make my car work and drive smoother and ease everything out and try and iron out the kinks in my car suspension uh and some people are like yo just buy you know, x brand or whatever and i'm like no i know that mitsubishi makes a good part and i was able to get a good deal through guys like ma performance shout out to you guys because you carry actual mitsubishi oem wheel hubs ones direct from manufacturer itself but with all that said my advice to anyone trying to buy parts online is to definitely do your homework on where you buy it from. You can do your homework on the parts, but you need to do your homework on where it's coming from because that makes all the difference. Because if you buy from someone that doesn't take care of the parts that they get, now you're running into the risk of damaging your car because that part might itself be damaged. You know, I had issues for weeks with buying camshaft position sensors for the Evo. And it's all because where I was buying them from, they were arriving broken. They were, they were arriving not working well. So I had to buy, 
how many did I buy? I think I bought four or five before I finally got one that would work and it's still in the car now. It's one of those things, man, where you got to take care about where you're getting your parts and not just the parts themselves. Because, like I said, someone just might not care if a box falls on the floor. Oh, well, they're just parts. They'll be fine. It doesn't work that way. But with that said, one thing you can buy from eBay, uh, not essential items. Things like air fresheners, shift knobs, shift boots, uh, accessories, things like that. Because they're not critical to the car's safety that are critical to the car's performance or function you can kind of go and do whatever you want to do with that because it's not going to affect you and that said i have bought parts from ebay for my car just to prove the point i bought some rain guards for the car so that i could actually drive with my window cracked so i'm not dying of heat stroke whatever i drive my car if anyone knows my car's ac does not work the greatest and as a result it gets toasty up in that business. So we now have the windows pretty much permanently left open because otherwise we're all gonna die. It's just, it's the inevitable factual truth about that car. We also bought uh, a stubby antenna for the car because it needed one. Unfortunately, my antenna that I had for the Evo, uh, it was a stock one, it was factory. It was huge, it was very long. It was like a foot and a half long, you know. Uh, that's how long that thing was I needed something smaller because it was marking up my wing every time I opened my trunk so we got a stubby and that's what we use now is the stubby antenna and it does work it does work well the radio sounds better it just it was a good buy and it was twenty dollars you know I other brands I've looked at were thirty forty fifty dollars for the same two and a half inch long stubby antenna stuff like that is okay Stuff like that makes it all right to buy from places like eBay. You know, when I went to buy my rain guards, the uh, manufacturer wanted to sell me them for $110. And they might have been good. They might have lasted a while. I don't know. I didn't buy them. What I do know is the ones I bought were $20 shipped to my door and arrived early. Uh, and they were great. They even had 3M tape to hold to the car they are stick-ons and i've crashed with them been through a couple of rainstorms with them and they're totally fine nothing wrong with them they actually don't really affect the appearance of the car much thanks to the fact that they're black and they match with the black trim on the car so for me it was a worthy buy it was valuable doesn't affect the critical components of the car you know like the handling or the engine drivetrain and all that it just was a creature feature that made things better and honestly i'm going to kind of Leave the video with that is if you're going to buy parts like this for your car, please just make sure that you buy the real stuff for your engine, like, you know, your intakes and all that. Buy them from people who actually study this stuff, who actually manufacture this stuff full time, like InGen and AEM and KN, because more than likely, I mean, yeah, we all know that, you know, the whole thing about intakes, they don't really add horsepower and all that. But the last thing you need is buying a cheap intake and the filter just completely disintegrating and flying into your engine and just destroying it. You know, that's stuff like that has happened. And it's true. You know, that's why people say don't buy Spectre intakes because that metal cap they have on there uh, has gotten loose on some cars and has been sucked down the throttle body and destroyed the intake system of their car. They cheaped out and their reward is a broken vehicle. You know, so all that said, I think my point's been made. If you're going to buy parts, buy them from manufacturers, buy them from people with a reputation for taking care of their parts, but also buying from manufacturers as well. And that is all I have for you guys today. I know it was a shorter video. You know, for some reason, my videos have been getting shorter with these podcasts, but don't worry. We have good topics coming. I have guests coming soon. Uh, I've been in contact with a couple people to try and talk about some very specific topics here on this podcast so if you're interested please like i said in the beginning do us a favor hit that subscribe button we do upload the podcast every week and we do also upload our main series every week so definitely check us out from time to time make sure you check your sub box because you know youtube is funny and for some reason doesn't want you to watch your subscriber content so 
whatever, you know, hey, I'm not trying to hate. I'm just realizing the reality of the world we live in. You know what I'm saying? But all that said, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. And tell us in the comments section, what is something that you've bought from Craigslist? Not Craigslist. What's something that you've bought from eBay that you sat there and went, nah, I probably shouldn't buy this and actually turned out okay? Because sometimes, you know, things aren't all that bad. Case in point, CS CX Racing. They're a brand that sells stuff on eBay. They're good to buy from and uh, support because they actually do their research and they actually test their own products and stuff like that. We'll be buying parts for the 240 through them and things like that. So not all is bad. I did want to put that out there before we end the video. Not all is bad. Just got to remember, not everyone is good. And with that said, God bless you guys. And we'll see you on another episode. Peace. Thank you.